Act 4, Scene 1 A cavern. In the middle, a boiling cauldron. Thunder. The three witches enter. The tawny cat has meowed three times. Three times, and the hedgehog has whined once. My spirit friend, Harpier, is yelling, It's time, it's time. Dance around the cauldron and throw in the poison entrails. You'll go in first. A toe that sat under a cold rock for a month, oozing poison from its pores. Double, 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 toil and, toil trouble. Toil and trouble. Fire, Fire burn, burn, and cauldron, cauldron bubble. bubble. We'll boil you in the cauldron next. A slice of swamp snake. All the rest of you into a newt eye, a frog's tongue, fur from a bat, a dog's tongue, the forked tongue of an adder, the stinger of a burrowing worm, a lizard's leg, an owl's wing. Make a charm to cause powerful trouble and boil and bubble like a broth of hell. Double, 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 double toil, toil and, and trouble, trouble. Fire, fire burn, burn and cauldron, cauldron bubble. bubble. Here come some more ingredients. The scale of a dragon, a wolf's tooth, a witch's mummified flesh, the gullet and stomach of a ravenous shark, a root of hemlock that was dug up into the dark, a Jew's liver, a goat's bile, some twigs of you that were broken off during a lunar eclipse, a Turk's nose, a tartar's lips, the finger of a baby that was strangled as a prostitute gave birth to it in a ditch. Make this potion thick and gluey. Now let's add a tiger's entrails to the mix. Double, double, double toil, toil and trouble. trouble fire, fire, burn, burn and cauldron, cauldron bubble. bubble. We'll cool the mixture with baboon blood. After that, the charm is finished. Hecat enters with three other witches. Well done. I admire your efforts, and all of you will share the rewards. Now come sing around the cauldron like a ring of elves and fairies, enchanting everything you put in. Music plays, and the six witches sing a song called Black Spirit. Hecat leaves. I can tell that something wicked is coming by the tingling in my thumbs. Doors open up for whoever is knocking. Macbeth enters. What's going on here, you secret evil midnight hags? What are you doing? Something, something there, there isn't, isn't a, word a word for. for. I, 
I don't know how you know things you do, but I insist that you answer my questions. I command you in the name of whatever dark powers you serve. I don't care if you unleash violent winds that tear down churches, make the foamy waves overwhelm ships and send sailors to their deaths, flatten crops and trees, make castles fall down on their inhabitants' heads, make palaces and pyramids collapse, and mix up everything in nature. Tell me what I want to know. Speak. Demand will answer. Would you rather hear these things from our mouths or from our masters? Call them. Let me see them. Pour in the blood of a sow who has eaten her nine offspring. Take the sweat of a murderer on the gallows and throw it into the flame. Come, Come higher, low, low spirits. spirits. Show yourself, Show and, yourself what you and what you do. do. Thunder, the first apparition appears, looking like a head with an armored helmet. Tell me, you unknown power. He can read your thoughts. Listen, but don't speak. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Beware, Macduff. Beware the Thane of Fifth. Let me go. Enough. The first apparition descends. Whatever you are, thanks for your advice. You have guessed exactly what I feared. But one word more. He will not be commanded by you. Here is another stronger than the first. Thunder. The second apparition appears, looking like a bloody child. Macbeth! 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 If I had three ears, I'd listen with all three. Be violent, bold and firm. Laugh at the power of other men, because nobody born from a woman will ever harm at Macbeth. The second apparition descends. Then I don't need to kill Macduff. I have no reason to fear him, but even so, I'll make doubly sure. I'll guarantee my own fate by having you killed, Macduff. That way I can conquer my own fear and sleep easy at night. Thunder, the third apparition appears, in the form of a child with a crown on his head and a tree in his hand. What is this spirit that looks like the son of a king and wears a crown on his young head? Listen, but, but don't, don't speak, speak to, to it. it. Be brave like the lion and proud. Don't even worry about who hates you, who resents you, and who conspires against you. Macbeth will never be defeated until Burnham Wood marches to fight you at Dunsinan Hill. The third apparition descends. That will never happen. Who can command the forest and make the trees pull the roots out of the earth? These were sweet omens. Good. My murderers will never come back to threaten me until the forest of Burnham gets up and moves, and I will be king for my entire natural life. But my heart is still throbbing to know one thing. Tell me, if your dark powers can see this far, will Banquo's sons ever reign in this kingdom? Don't, Don't try, try to, to find, find out, out more. more. I demand to be satisfied. If you refuse, let an eternal curse fall on you. Let me know, why is that cauldron seeking, and what is that music? Hot boys play music for a ceremonial position. Show, show, show. Show him and make him grieve. Come like Come shadows, like shadows and, depart and depart in the same, in the same way. way. Eight kings march across the stage, the last one with a mirror in his hand, followed by the ghost of Banquo. You look too much like the ghost of Banquo. Go away! Your crown hurts my eyes. Your blonde hair, which looks like another crown underneath the one you're wearing, looks just like the first king's hair. Now I see a third king, who looks just like the second. Filthy hags, why are you showing me this? A fourth, my eyes are bulging out of their sockets. Will this line stretch on forever? Another one, and a seventh, I don't want to see any more. And yet an eighth appears, holding a mirror in which I see many more men, and some are carrying double balls and triple scepters, meaning they're kings of more than one country. Horrible sight. Now I see it is true they are Bango's descendants. A Bango with his blood clotted hair is smiling at me and pointing to them as his. The spirits of the kings and the ghosts of Bango vanish. What? Is this true? 
Yes, this is true. But why do you stand there so dumbfounded? Come, sisters, let's cheer him up and show him our talents. I will charm the air to produce music while you all dance around like crazy. So this king will say we did our duty and entertain him. Music plays. The witches dance and then vanish. Where are they? Gone? Let this evil hour be marked forever in the calendar as cursed. You, outside! Come in! Lennox enters. What does your grace want? Did you see the weird sisters? No, my lord. Did they pass by you? No, indeed, my lord. The air on which they ride is infected. Damn all those who trust them. I heard the galloping of horses. Who was it that came here? Two or three men, my lord, who brought the message that Macduff has fled to England. Fled to England? Yes, my good lord. Time, you thwart my dreadful plans. Unless a person does something the second he thinks of it, he'll never get a chance to do it. From now on, as soon as I decide to do something, I'm going to act immediately. In fact, I'll start following up my thoughts with actions right now. I'll raid Macduff's castle, seize the town of Fifth, and kill his wife, his children, and anyone else unfortunate enough to stand in line for his inheritance. No more foolish talk. I will do this deed before I lose my sense of purpose. But no more spooky visions. Where are the messengers? Come, bring me to them. They exit. Act 4, Scene 2. Lady Macduff, her son, and Ross enter. What did he do that made him flee this land? You have to be patient, madame. He had no patience. He was crazy to run away. Even if you're not a traitor, you're going to look like one if you run away. You don't know whether it was wisdom or fear that made him flee. How could it be wisdom to leave his wife, his children, his house, and his titles in a place so unsafe that he himself flees it? He doesn't love us. He lacks a natural instinct to protect his family. Even the fragile wren, the smallest of birds, will fight against the owl when it threatens her young ones in the nest. His running away has everything to do with fear and nothing to do with love. And since it's so unreasonable for him to run away, it has nothing to do with wisdom either. My dearest relative, I'm begging you, pull yourself together. As for your husband, he is noble, wise, and judicious, and he understands what the times require. It's not safe for me to say much more than this, but times are bad when people get denounced as traitors and don't even know why. In times like these, we believe frightening rumors, but we don't even know what we're afraid of. It's like being tossed around on the ocean in every direction and finally getting nowhere. I'll say goodbye now. It won't be long before I'm back. When things are at their worst, they have to stop or else improve to the way things were before. My young cousin, I put my blessings upon you. He has a father, and yet he is fatherless. I have to go. If I stay longer, I'll embarrass you and disgrace myself by crying. I'm leaving now. Ross exits. Young man, your father's dead. What are you going to do now? How are you going to live? I will live the way birds do, mother. What? Are you going to start eating worms and flies? I mean, I will live on whatever I get, like birds do. Yeah, you'd be a pitiful bird. You wouldn't know enough to be afraid of traps. Why should I be afraid of them, mother? If I am a pitiful bird, like you say, hunters won't want me, no matter what you say. My father is not dead. Yes, he is dead. What are you going to do for a father? Maybe you should ask, what will you do for a husband? Oh, I could buy 20 husbands at any market. If so, you'd be buying them to sell again. You talk like a child, but you're very smart anyway. Was my father a traitor, mother? Yes, he was. What is a traitor? Someone who makes a promise and breaks it. And is everyone who swears and lies a traitor? Everyone who does so is a traitor and should be hanged. And should everyone who makes promises and breaks them be hanged? Everyone. Who should hang them? The honest men. And then the liars are fools. For there are enough liars in the world to beat up the honest men and hang them. <laughs> Heaven help you for saying that, boy. But what will you do without a father? If he were dead, you'd be weeping for him. If you aren't weeping, it's a good sign that I'll soon have a new father. Silly babbler, how you talk. A messenger enters. Bless you, fair lady. You don't know me, but I know you're an important person. I am afraid something dangerous is coming toward you. If you'll take a simple man's advice, don't be here when it arrives. Go away and take your children. I feel bad for scaring you like this, but it would be much worse for me to let you come to harm. And harm is getting close. 
Heaven keep you safe. The messenger exits. Where should I go? I haven't done anything wrong. But I have to remember that I'm here on earth where doing evil is often praised and doing good is sometimes a stupid and dangerous mistake. So then why should I offer this womanish defense that I'm innocent? The murderers enter. Who are these men? Where is your husband? I hope he's not anywhere so disreputable that thugs like you can find him. He's a traitor. You're lying, you shaggy-haired villain! What's that, you runt? Young son of a traitor! He has killed me, mother! Run away, I beg you! The sun dies. Lady Macduff exits, crying, Murder! The murders exit, following her. Act 4, Scene 3. Malcolm and Macduff enter. Let's seek out some shady place where we can sit down alone and cry our hearts out. Instead of crying, let's keep hold of our swords and defend our fallen homeland like honorable men. Each day, new widows howl, new orphans cry, and new sorrows slap heaven in the face until it sounds like heaven itself feels Scotland's anguish and screams in pain. I will avenge whatever I believe is wrong, and I'll believe whatever I'm sure is true, and I'll put right whatever I can when the time comes. What you just said may perhaps be true. This tyrant, whose mere name is so awful it hurts us to say it, was once considered an honest man. You were one of his favorites. He hasn't done anything to harm you yet. I'm inexperienced. But maybe you're planning to win Macbeth's favor by betraying me to him. It would be smart to offer someone poor and innocent like me as a sacrificial lamb to satisfy an angry god like Macbeth. I'm not treacherous. But Macbeth is. Even someone with a good and virtuous nature might give way to a royal command. But I beg your pardon. My fears can't actually make you evil. Angels are still bright even though Lucifer, the brightest angel, fell from heaven. Even though everything evil wants to look good, good still has to look good too. I have lost my hope of convincing you to fight against Macbeth. Maybe you lost your hopes about me where I found my doubts about you. Why did you leave your wife and child vulnerable, the most precious things in your life, those strong bonds of love? How could you leave them behind? But I beg you. Don't interrupt my suspicions as slander against you. You must understand that I want to protect myself. You may really be honest, no matter what I think. Bleed, bleed, poor country. Great tyrant, go ahead and build yourself up because good people are afraid to stand up to you. Enjoy everything you stole because your title is safe. Farewell, Lord. I wouldn't be the villain you think I am if I were offered all of Macbeth's kingdom and the riches of the East, too. Don't be offended. I don't completely distrust you. I do think Scotland is sinking under Macbeth's oppression. Our country weeps. It bleeds, and each day a fresh cut is added to her wounds. I also think there would be many people willing to fight for me. The English have promised me thousands of troops. But even so, when I have Macbeth's head under my foot or stuck on the end of my sword, then my poor country will be plagued by worse evil than it was before. It will suffer worse and in more ways than ever under the reign of the king who follows Macbeth. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about myself. I know I have so many vices that when people see all of them exposed, evil Macbeth will seem as pure as snow in comparison, and poor Scotland will call him a sweet lamb when they compare him to me and my infinite evils. Even in hell, you couldn't find a devil worse than Macbeth. I admit that he's murderous, lecherous, greedy, lying, deceitful, violent, malicious, and guilty of every sin that has a name. But there is no end, absolutely none, to my sexual desires. Your wives, your daughters, your old women, and your young maids together could not satisfy my lust. My desire would overpower all restraints on anyone who stood in my way. It would be better for Macbeth to rule than someone like me. Endless greed and lust in a man's nature is a kind of tyranny. It has caused the downfall of many kings. But don't be afraid to take the crown that belongs to you. You can find a way to satisfy your desires in secret, while still appearing virtuous. You can deceive everyone. There are more than enough willing women around. Your lust can't possibly be so strong that you'd use up all the women willing to give themselves to the king once they find out he wants them. Along with being full of lust... I'm also incredibly greedy. If I became king, I would steal the nobles' lands, taking jewels from one guy and houses from another. The more I had, the greedier I would grow. 
until I'd invent false quarrels with my good and loyal subjects, destroying them so I could get my hands on their wealth. The greed you're talking about is worse than lust because you won't ungrow it. Greed has been the downfall of many kings. But don't be afraid. Scotland has enough treasures to satisfy you out of your own royal coffers. These bad qualities are bearable when balanced against your good sides. But I don't have any good sides. I don't have a trace of the qualities a king needs, such as justice, truth, moderation, stability, generosity, perseverance, mercy, humility, devotion, patience, courage, and bravery. Instead, I overflow with every variation of all the different vices. No, if I had power, I would take world peace and throw it down to hell. Oh, Scotland, Scotland. If someone like me is fit to be king, let me know. I really am exactly as I have described myself to you. Fit to be king? You're not fit to live. Oh, miserable nation ruled by a unsurping murderous tyrant. When will you see peaceful days again? The man who has a legal right to the throne is, by his own admission, a cursed man and a disgrace to the royal family. Your royal father, Duncan, was a virtuous king. Your mother spent more time on her knees in prayer than she did standing up, and she lived a life of absolute piety. Goodbye. The evils you have described inside yourself have driven me out of Scotland forever. Oh, my heart, your hope is dead. Macduff, this passionate outburst which proves your integrity has removed my doubts about you and made me realize that you really are trustworthy and honorable. That devil Macbeth has tried many times to trick me and lure me into his power, and prudence prevents me from believing people too quickly. But with God as my witness, I will let myself be guided by you, and I take back my confession. I take back all the bad things I said about myself, because none of those flaws are really part of my character. I'm still a virgin. I have never told a lie. I barely care about what I already own, let alone feel jealous of another's possessions. I've never broken a promise. I wouldn't betray the devil himself. I love truth as much as I, I love life. The lies I told about my character are actually the first false words I have ever spoken. The person who I really am is ready to serve you and our poor country. Indeed, before you arrived here, Old Seward, with 10,000 soldiers already prepared for battle, was making his way here. Now we will fight Macbeth together and may the chances of our success be as great as the justice of our cause. Why are you silent? It's hard to make sense of such different stories. A doctor enters. Well, we'll speak more soon. Is King Edward coming? Yes, sir. A crowd of sick people is waiting for him to heal them. Their illness confounds the most advanced techniques of modern medicine, but when he touches them, they heal immediately because of the power granted to him by heaven. Thank you, doctor. The doctor exits. What disease is he talking about? It's called evil. Edward's healing touch is a miracle that I have seen him perform many times during my stay in England. How he receives these gifts from heaven, only he can say but he cures people with strange conditions, all swollen, plagued by ulcers, and pitiful to look at, patients who are beyond the help of surgery, by placing a gold coin around their necks and saying holy prayers over them. They say that he bequeaths this ability to heal to his royal descendants. Along with this strange power, he also has the gift of prophecy and various other abilities. All of these signs mark him as a man graced by God. Ross enters. Who's that coming over here? By his dress, I can tell he's a my countryman, but I don't recognize him. My noble kinsman, welcome. I recognize him now. May God alter the circumstances that keep us apart. Hello, sir. Is Scotland the same as when I left it? Alas, our poor country, it's too frightened to look out itself. Scotland is no longer the land where we were born. It's the land where we will, will die where no one ever smiles except for the fool who knows nothing, where sighs, groans, and shrieks rip through the air, but no one notices, where violent sorrow is a common emotion. When the funeral bell rings, people no longer ask who died. Good men die before the flowers and their caps wilt. They die before they even fall sick. Oh, your report is too poetic, but it sounds so true. What is the most recent news? 
Even news an hour old is old news. Every minute another awful thing happens. How is my wife? She's well. And all my children? They're well too. Macbeth hasn't attacked them? They were at peace when I left them. Don't be stingy with your words. What's the news? While I was coming here to tell you my sad news, I heard rumors that many good men are arming themselves to rebel against Macbeth. When I saw Macbeth's army on the move, I knew the rumors must be true. Now is the time when we need your help. Your presence in Scotland would inspire people to fight. Even the women would fight to rid themselves of Macbeth's oppression. Let them be comforted. I'm returning to Scotland. Gracious King Edward has sent us noble Seward and 10,000 soldiers. There's no soldier more experienced or successful than Seward in the entire Christian world. I wish I could repay this happy news with good news of my own, but I have some news that should be howled in a barren desert where nobody can hear it. What is this news about? Does it affect all of us or just one of us? No decent man can keep from sharing in the sorrow, but my news affects you alone. If it's for me, don't keep it from me. Let me have it now. I hope you won't hate me forever after I say these things, because I will soon fill your ears with the most dreadful news you have ever heard. I think I can guess what you're about to say. Your castle was attacked. Your wife and children were savagely slaughtered. If I told you how they were killed, it would cause you so much pain that it would kill you too and add your body to the pile of murdered corpses. Merciful heaven! Come on, man, don't keep your grief hidden. Put your sorrow into words. The grief you keep inside, you will whisper in your heart until it breaks. They killed my children too? They killed your wife, your children, your servants, anyone they could find. And I had to be away? My wife was killed too? I said she was. Take comfort. Let's cure this awful grief by taking revenge on Macbeth. He doesn't have any children. All my pretty little children? Did you say all? Oh, that bird from hell, all of them? What, all my children and their mother dead in one fell swoop? Fight it like a man. I will, but I also have to feel it like a man. I can't help remembering the things that were most precious to me. Did heaven watch the slaughter and not send down any help? Sinful Macduff, they were killed because of you. As wicked as I am, they were slaughtered because of me, not because of anything they did. May God give their souls rest. Let this anger sharpen your sword. Transform your grief into anger. Don't block the feelings in your heart. Let them loose as rage. I could go on weeping like a woman and bragging about how I will avenge them. But gentle heavens, don't keep me waiting. Bring me face to face with Macbeth, that devil of Scotland. Put him within the reach of my sword, and if he escapes, may heaven forgive him as well. Now you sound like a man. Come on, let's go see King Edward. The army is ready. All we have to do now is say goodbye to the king. Macbeth is right for the picking. Will be acting as God's agents. Cheer up as much as you can. A new day will come at last. They exit.